Hey guys, welcome back to my channel all about architecture, where I make videos related to architecture notes and architecture recruitment. So today we are going to learn a new topic that is elevators and escalator. So today is class 2 and this topic of elevator and escalators comes under section 10 that is of part B1 of architecture. So let's begin. Before starting, let's have a small overview of today's class. First, we will read about elevators, then later on about escalators. In elevators, we'll learn about parts of elevators, types of elevators, quality of service, and quantity of service. These are the important topics which I have listed out in elevators. In escalators, we'll discuss about parts of escalators, layout, and the operation and design of these escalators. These are important topics. I would suggest you guys to refer to NPC for more detailed information. And read some of the terminologies from NPC. They can ask questions from NPC terminologies. So let's begin. First, we'll discuss about elevators. Elevators are commonly called as lift. So let's go with the definition of elevators. An elevator or a lift is a type of vertical transportation that moves people or goods between the floors in a building. So as you know, these are called as elevators. Let's discuss about the parts of elevators. This is a uh, elevator's parts diagram. So mainly this is the car or main part of, uh, of the lift. Okay, this uh, this is called as car and uh, it carries people from one floor to another in a building. As we can see, this part, these are called as car roller guides. These guides the car to move in a single direction. And this goes from here, comes down and get attached to this part. This, is called as, this part is called as suspension ropes. And it is, it is attached to a counterweight. This is a traveling cable and this small thing over here, is, over here is a governor and this is a main part that is motor and this is a controller basically this all parts are set up in a machine room some elevators have machine and some elevators don't have machine they are called as machineless elevators and this is counterweight with the help of this the car moves upwards or in downwards direction. As you can see this, these are called as buffers because below this, the car, car doesn't move. So these are like bifurcation. So this is basically the parts of elevators. Let's, next we'll discuss about. Let's discuss about the types of elevators. First we'll discuss about passenger elevator. Uh, passenger elevator. Passenger elevator is basically designed to move people from one floor to another. It has a capacity of from 225 to 1250 kgs. It can carry. And the speed and the speed of the elevator is from 2 to 3 meters per second. If you exceed the height of 10 floors, more than 10 floors, uh, the speed can be from 3 to 10 meters per second. So these are the important points of passenger elevators. Next is freight lift, also called as goods lift. Basically, this is designed to carry goods or materials. Sometimes even it carries passengers or people. This can carry about 2,000 to 10,000 kgs, depending upon the height of the building. So this is all about freight elevator. So we will discuss about the dump elevator lift. This elevator is designed to carry goods, same like freight elevators. But the height of this lift is smaller compared to freight elevator. It's about like one meter in height or we can say three feet. It just purely carries goods. No passengers. Passengers are allowed in this. Basically, these are used uh, to carry food or books, 
and they are usually connected to kitchens like directly from ground floor to the kitchen this is all about dump meter next will hospital bed hospital bed lifts are basically designed for hospital mainly these are used in hospitals to carry stretcher a bed with two passengers the minimum size of this lift is from like 1400 mm to 2400 mm next lift is sidewalk lift sidewalk lift elevators are special type of flight elevators even these carry goods sidewalk elevators move goods from basement to ground level and these are controlled via exterior external switch so next is stage lift also called as orchestra lift these are used for any of uh, these are used in any type of concerts or performance basically these are set up in music halls or auditoriums it holds it hold up the whole team of artists they are used to raise and lower the entire section of the theater stage next is vehicle lift usually these are within the buildings with area with limited space they don't even have a space for a ramp so uh, these type of vehicle lifts are installed or there which moves cars or vehicles from one level to another it has a capacity of 2 tons this is all about vehicle lift next is peter no star lift it's also called as man lift or human lift is a special type of elevator this elevator consists of chain of boxes of open compartment that move slowly in a loop up and down inside a building without stopping it's designed in this way this is a compartment different types of compartment so it moves up and down continuously like a chain to me so any passenger can step on or off at any floor they like next is scissor lift these are basically movable or mobile lifts they look similar like a scissor and this is the platform so it raises the goods from one from one level to another these are basically used in factories or industries next is rack and pinion lift these are basically designed to move materials during construction from one level to another so these are different types of elevators which we have discussed next is quality of service basically quality of services are mainly needed for passenger lift it's major in the terms of passenger waiting time how much time the passenger waits so that the lift drops the other passenger and comes back and this waiting time depends upon fourth main thing that is the speed of the lift the capacity it carries at one time number of floors the lift is serving number of lifts present in the building so the quality is decided on the waiting time so there is important table so this is waiting time and this is the quality the waiting time is 20 to 25 seconds then it's called as excellent quality lift if the waiting time is 30 to 35 it's called as good quality if the waiting time is 35 to 40 it's a fair kind of quality but the waiting time is 45 then it's a poor quality lift if the waiting time is over 45 then that's unsatisfactory on the basis of waiting time the quality of service of that lift is considered let's discuss about the return travel time return travel time is also called as round trip time RTD. This is nothing but the average time taken by a lift 
to relieve the passenger people from ground floor to destination floor and return back to ground floor and this depends upon rtt depends upon speed speed of the lift capacity it's carrying and number of floors it's serving it's basically same as uh, waiting time so all this together count rtd so to calculate average passenger waiting time waiting time you require number of lifts and rtd so the formula for waiting time is rtd by number of lifts that's here the unit unit for our wt is seconds and unit for rtd is also seconds now let's discuss about the quantity of service basically this is called as passenger handling capacity h like during the peak hours during peak hours how many percentage of people it handles it handles in the period of 5 minutes that is 300 seconds the peak hour may be uh, during morning or evening like morning 9 to 11 and evening 4 to 6 basically these are office and students uh, hour so handling capacity depends upon first is waiting time second is peak hour population as i said from like morning 9 to 10 how many people are going and third is number of people carried in a lift car at once like average number of passengers carried in a lift car let's be usually p is 80% 80% of actual car capacity so handling capacity h is 300 into people divided by waiting time and population like 300 that is 5 minutes and people that is average number of people carried in a lift car that's p is nothing but waiting time and this is the population overall population on peak hours if you are calculating percent uh, multiply this with 100 so you get answer in percentage so in ideal situation a lift can carry about a lift can carry about 8.33 percent 8.33 percent of passengers not more than that So NBC have given some handling capacity of different classes of building. So if we considered high class building, the handling capacity usually exceeds eight percent. If it's a mid medium class building, the handling capacity is six to eight percent. If it's low class building or low end building the capacity ranges from 5 to 7% these are some of the standards given by ndc uh, which are important so let's discuss about the stops so probable number of stops of a lift car so basically this depends upon the average number of passenger carried carried that's nothing but p and number of flows it's out about the terminal floor basically total number of floors of the building so stops yes is equals to n into 1 minus 
minus 1 n whole to the power p in this way stops stops of lift car have been calculated there are some of the important terminologies which i want you guys to refer from npc volume 2 book like automatic rescue device i'll just say you briefly automatic rescue device are a device meant to bring a lift stuck between the floors due to loss of power or electricity to the nearest landing level counter weight as we discussed earlier the weight is a weight or a series of weights to counterbalance the weight of the lift car and the part of rated load elevator safety gears basically these are safety protection devices to run the to run elevator safe it stops the free fall of elevator usually this is installed on cars or counter weight of elevators next is seismic mode this is a special mode in which the lift operates after detection of seismic trigger level in case of any earthquake accidents uh, if they detect then this special type of mode get operated so these are few of the few of the terminologies i have discussed you guys need to refer more terminologies uh, which have, which have been given in in bc book so please refer them uh, as per date those are important so next let's discuss about the escalators escalators are uh, moving staircases which we find in malls so escalators as a type of vertical transportation in the form of moving staircases a conveyor transport device for carrying people between floors of the building escalators have the capacity of moving large number of people together but in case of elevator uh, the size is being the capacity is being minimized and the main advantage is there is no waiting time for this no waiting time is required these are usually called as revolving staircases so next let's discuss about the parts of es escalators so these are escalator steps the steps themselves are solid one piece and die cast aluminum or steel they have yellow line in front of them and in front of each step we have a zigzag part These are called as cone plate. Basically, uh, this if this is a step, this is a zigzag pattern that is called as cone plate. Right now, we can't see in this image. There is a truss which support the whole structure of escalators. In this manner, this truss truss is designed. And these are handrails, a black strip ones. Handrail provides a convenient handhold for passengers while they are riding the escalators. The handrails are pulled back by the track, dragged by a chain that is connected to the main driver gear by series of pulleys. This is handrail drive, which is connected to connected to handrail. This is step turn around. The step get folded and. moves in upward direction and this is landing part we have two landings one on the upper level and other on this lower level we have emergency uh, stop switch at this point and there is a main electric motor which controls the whole escalators movement so these are some of the important parts of escalators so let's discuss about the layout of escalators There are three different types of layouts. The first one is parallel layout. As you can see in this image, one goes upwards and other other one comes downwards. These are called as parallel layouts. The second one is multi parallel layout. Multiple parallel layout. Basically. If this move upwards, these two moves downwards. 
Usually this uh, center one is a concrete staircase for those people who get fear of riding on escalators. And the third layout is crisscross. Crisscross layout. Usually these are in single direction and helps in and uses less space. Less space is required, but only in one direction it moves. If it's going up, it'll go up or downwards. So these are three types of layouts of escalators. Next is operation and design. So in design, we see that there is an angle of inclination. The angle of inclination is about 30 to 35 degree and the height of escalator should not increase 6 meters. So in case if you see the maximum height is of 6 meter, it should not increase more than this. Operating speed. The operating speed is 0 0.5 meters per second. It should not exceed this limit. Thread and riser. Thread and riser's dimension. The riser should not increase the height of 220 mm. And the thread should not increase 400 mm or decrease. So these are minimum standards. Okay, let's discuss about the width of escalators and this at the handrail. So the nominal width, minimum width should be 0.58 meters to 1.1 meter. So this width should be of 4 m. 400 mm to 1020 mm and the overall width should be like width plus 150 mm maximum here consider this as 500 mm plus 150 so extension of of handle as we see Okay, this is landing. So if this is a landing, we have landing here. So there is an extra part. This part. It's about 300 mm extension on both sides. Sorry, please blur with my drawings. So these are minimum uh, handle extension after the landing. So these are uh, some of the basic operation and design designing terms to be considered during the design of escalators. So next, let's discuss about the travel later. This looks almost same like escalators. So basically, small moving conveyor. Mechanism. That transports people across a horizontal or inclined plane over a short over a short distance. Basically, we see them in airports or some malls, big malls, etc. Usually, the uh, usually these are straight horizontal or sometimes these are a bit inclined like about 5 to like 5 to 10 degrees not more than that so guys this is all about escalators and elevators so in coming next videos i'll try to complete the numerical part by solving the problems and uh, some of the previous year eight questions related to escalators and elevators and some of the new questions which can arrive if you guys have any sort of doubt related to this topic, please comment down below. I'll try to I'll try to clear your doubts. 
and thank you so much for watching this video please give a thumbs up and and subscribe my channel all about architecture i will be back soon with a new video on new topics till then goodbye take care and have a great day